I want you to open your Bibles, if you will, please, over to the uh, book of Luke, chapter 8. Everybody, please turn there. Luke, chapter 8. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Luke, chapter 8. I believe this is a timely message. I know several uh, families that called in this morning uh, or contacted the church to let me know that they couldn't be here is because of sickness. And uh, that's not what motivated me to preach on what I'm going to speak on today because the Lord spoke this in my spirit uh, last night before I even knew uh, these people were sick. But there's a lot of sick people uh, today, and it seems like uh, in our church, uh, the enemy is trying to attack, <laughs> attack some of our loved ones, uh, maybe you, uh, with sickness. In Luke 8, if you'll turn there, verse uh, 43, I want to talk about a woman <clears throat> that was sick. And uh, this woman had heard uh, about the fame of the prophet of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ. And I want you to listen to how she responded in her sickness uh, to the Lord. And we're going to glean from these uh, scriptures, this text today, how that you and I uh, can approach the Lord uh, and receive our healing. And I, I know that there's a lot of confusion going on out here in the world. Uh, many are taught, I'm just going to obey the Holy Ghost, uh, we have prayed uh, at the very beginning of the service, and I feel the anointing. I felt it all through the song service. I feel it right now, and I'm just going to flow with the anointing. Listen to me carefully. Uh, and if you've ever listened to a preacher uh, speak on any subject, uh, I know what I'm doing here. Okay? Uh, healing is not a promise to the believer in the future. A lot of people think that healing is a promise the Lord's made that he might give to you. Isaiah saw the bleeding Messiah in the future and cried out unto the anointing, and with his stripes we are healed. The apostle Peter corrected false doctrine and misunderstanding because Peter also said, by his stripes ye were healed. When Jesus went to the, to the cross of Calvary, Lord have mercy, I feel the Holy Ghost. When Jesus willingly, lovingly, and caringly went to the cross of Calvary, he took a beating on his back before he was nailed on the cross. And in his work of atonement, listen to me, he provided healing to the believer. It's part of the work of salvation. As you go by faith to the cross to be saved. And when you do, you're guaranteed salvation. Listen, healing is also the children's bread. Did y'all understand that? Healing is the children's bread. You don't have to stay in sickness. Are you saying, Brother Harris, that, that, that the Lord heals everybody? Well, ultimately, yes. You know, if the Lord, if it's in His will for you to become ill and die and go to heaven, I, I, I call that the ultimate healing. <laughs> Glory to God. There is a sickness unto death, and the Bible says there is a sickness not unto death. And it's our duty as believers to discern uh, for the Lord's will for our healing. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, Brother Harris, you, you're not going to convince me. Well, stay sick. I preach the gospel message as often as I can, and there's a lot of folks that ain't going to get saved. Well, you know, if you want to go to hell, go on. But if you want to go to heaven, listen to what the Scripture says. Healing was provided in the atonement. You say, well, Brother Harris, you know, I know so-and-so, and he or she has been believing the Lord for healing. Well, you don't know their heart. 
And listen to me carefully. I'm not going to limit God's ability on somebody else's experience. Boy, y'all getting quiet. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. I know God heals because God has healed me. I know God heals because the Word of God teaches that God heals. Last night, Reinhard Bunky, I don't know if you, you know anything about him. But this man is a real servant of God. And a minister in Africa was killed in an automobile accident. And they took him to the morgue and embalmed him. And three days later, his wife heard from the Lord that God could raise him from the dead if she would stand on the authority of God's word. You say, oh, no, preacher, you're one of them. Yes, I am. Proud to say I am. I believe that God can do anything. I believe that with my God, nothing shall be impossible. I saw God raise, I saw the testimony where God raised that young pastor from the dead. He was dead three days. He had been pumped with embalming fluid, put in a coffin, are you listening to me, and sent home to the family uh, to prepare for the funeral. It was on the third night that his wife received uh, uh, from the Lord confirmation that God would heal her husband if she would believe. Amen. If she would have faith. And this woman believed the Lord, woke her father-in-law up in the middle of the night and said, the Lord has told me that he will heal my husband and bring him back to life if I can get him to Brother Bucky's revival service. Amen. And did you know the family loaded this dead preacher in his coffin in a, in a, in a car and carried him to Brother Bucky's revival? And the security guards, government security guards that was there pr pr protecting uh, the people at the revival wouldn't even let them in. And the guards reasoned, if, if you carry a coffin into the service, you're going to cause people to panic. And you're going to scare people and uh, people could die. You know what this woman done? Can I tell you what this woman done? She said, can we take him out of the coffin and carry him into the church? Amen. Folks, that's faith. Somebody say amen. What is faith? Let me tell you what it is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things you don't see. Somebody say glory. Amen. Faith is the substance. Faith is the substance of things you're hoping God to do. Listen to me. Faith is powerful when the name of Jesus is mixed with it. Uh, hallelujah. It can produce any designed effect. With God there is nothing impossible. Lord, I feel this in my soul today. Well, they pulled the car down to them in the parking lot. Took the dead preacher out of the coffin and started to tote him into the church. And the security guards were still afraid that it would disrupt and upset, maybe cause a riot. And by this time, did you know that media, the media had come together around. Also, uh, secular people, uh, uh, sinners came because word began to spread. They're carrying a dead man in the church to be raised from the dead. So they wouldn't let them go into the main auditorium. They told this man, uh, this man's wife, y'all have to carry him into the youth center. And did you know they carried him in to the youth center downstairs in the basement, laid him on a picnic table is what it looked like to me. Are you listening to me? And the anointing, I said, and the anointing in that assembly, hallelujah, 
touch the dead man who had been embalmed and dead for three days. He started breathing. Are you listening to me? He started breathing and the ministers there began to pray for him and to rub his body. Are you listening to me? Within a few minutes, this dead man was setting up in the auditorium being restored back to life. With God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. I myself have prayed for at least three people who doctors pronounced dead and God brought them back to life. I know that with God, nothing shall be impossible. This little Jewish woman in Luke chapter 8, verse 43 had also heard of the great power of Jesus Christ and the manifold miracles that he had been doing in his earthly ministry. The Bible says, and a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, watch this, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any came behind Jesus and touched the border of his garments and immediately, and immediately her issue of blood stenched. And Jesus said, who touched me? Notice that. Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling. And falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she uh, was healed immediately. And Jesus said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort thy faith. Underline this. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. The reason that little woman by faith could touch and believe Jesus for healing because in his body was the blood of God. It was the blood of the Lamb that was to be sacrificed in the blood of Jesus is salvation salvation for every human being in the blood of Jesus is divine healing if thou canst believe if you will put your faith in Jesus in his blood is divine healing glory to God don't let people rob you of the promise hallelujah and the hope that is in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew, I mean Mark 4. Matthew, list this story along with Luke. But Mark seems to go more into detail about this woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark 5, everybody turn there. I want you to see it with your own eyes. In verse 24, look, look at Mark's account. And Jesus went with him. He was going to a man's house named Jairus, whose daughter was lying at the point of death. Watch this. Jesus was going to raise that young woman from the dead. Are y'all listening to me? Jesus raised people from the dead and still can do it today. Somebody say amen. You know, I don't see where, there's a, where there is confusion or conflict here. 
if the Lord can save my soul and get my, my soul and body from this earth to, to the gates of heaven, then he can do anything I need him to do in this life. And while Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house, the woman with the issue of blood thought to herself, if I can just touch his clothes, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Lord, have mercy. That's what you call faith. Somebody say glory. You see, she truly believed that if she could just put her fingers on the hem of his garments, that the power within him would bring healing into her body. And folks, I want to tell you, it did. <laughs> Somebody say glory. We've already read where it did. And I want you to understand that when you're sick, if you will have the same faith that this little woman had with the issue of blood, if you'll determine in your heart, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, if I can only get to Jesus, if I can paraphrase it, if I'll take this to Jesus, I know that in him is salvation. I know that in him is my healing. Watch this. She got healed before he ever died on the cross. Because she knew by faith that in Christ Jesus was man's eternal salvation. Hallelujah. And our healing under the old covenant. Let me see if I can bring you up to par. Under the law, when a man was sick or a woman was sick, they would bring an offering to the priest to make atonement for their sins. Are you following me? Listen to me carefully here. Don't miss this. Everything in the law points to the finished work of Jesus on the cross. That was the purpose of the law, was to show man how far away from God he was and how desperately he needed God. Everything in the law was a type and a shadow of Jesus, a crucifixion at Calvary. And this little woman knew historically that when a family was needing forgiveness or healing, that they would carry a lamb or a sacrifice to the priest. And when the priest would make the sacrifice for atonement, God would forgive the sin and heal the sickness. She knew this because it was a system that God set in order for all Israelis. Are you listening to me? And she had heard people preach that Jesus was that promised Messiah of the law. That's where her faith came from. When she believed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, she knew that with him nothing would be impossible. That's why she made that statement. If I could just touch the hem, the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. How determined are you to be healed? How determined are you for our loved ones to be healed? Let's, let's go into the story now and unpeel the onion. This was a very desperate woman. An issue of blood for 12 years. When I read about that, that tells me that she was sick daily for 12 years. She was anemic because of continual bleeding. Are you listening to me? Her life was miserable. You can imagine uh, that how poor she was because every time she got her hands uh, on a little bit of money, uh, she would go to a doctor and, and, and he couldn't do her no good and then she would run to another doctor. Listen to me carefully. Sometimes uh, when the doctor is done, uh, done all they can, uh, that will make our faith uh, rise up to Jesus. It will make our faith say, if I can only get to Jesus, uh, if I can only uh, believe the Lord, uh, then I know that I'll be made whole. 
You know, as a pastor, for 35 plus years, I'm the guy, I'm the guy you go to when your doctor throws his hands up and says, I can't do anything else for you. Be careful. Be careful how you snarl your nose up at the man of God because he's the one they dump all the responsibility in his lap. This woman had went to every doctor, had tried every medication she could possibly get a hold of, and it done her no good. But when she heard, when she heard the good news about Jesus, when she heard about the miracles that he performed, we can only imagine. I'm going to go ahead and use my imagination. Maybe she had heard already that he had walked on water. Maybe she had heard already that he had raised others from the dead. Maybe she already heard the testimonies of leprosy being healed. And she thought in her heart, this Messiah can heal me if I can just get to him, if I can just be touched by him, if I can just touch him, I know he has the power to set me free. And that's the way we ought to think and that's the way our faith ought to drive us to seek the Lord for divine healing. We're in a better position than she was. We've got the whole Bible. We know that healing is in the atonement. All we got to do is believe God and accept it. When I got saved, the devil told me, you didn't get saved. And I snapped right back, yes, I did. When the devil told me, Frankie Harris, you ain't never been no good and you still ain't no good. I told the devil, devil, you a liar. Because Jesus made me a new creation. And the old things were passed away. Do you get my drift? When I got saved, the devil tried to convince me that it wasn't real. That I couldn't have it. That I shouldn't have it. That I didn't know what I was doing. But I kept on standing on the authority of God's word. And one day the devil showed up again and said, Frankie Harris, you ain't saved. And I looked the devil square in the eyes. I'm talking about in faith. And I said, devil, get thee behind me. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You have no more authority over me. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. I want to tell you the devil dropped out of sight for a long time. And the same faith Brings your healing. Let's look. Get how desperate she was. Her disease was a debilitating disease. Her disease was a humiliating disease. Her disease was a long lasting disease. Twelve years. That's a long time to suffer. A disease. I guarantee you, she was desperate. Now, I want to tell you that because this is the truth. When you're at the end of your rope, when you've done all you can do, I'm going to say this again. When you know that you can't fix it yourself, you can't bring healing yourself, when the doctor can't help you, when the lawyer can't help you, or you when the judge won't help you, then God is up to something. I said when man has failed you, you're at a good position to receive by faith something from God Almighty. Her sickness had caused her to become poor. Think about that. Jesus was her only, only hope. Bible says she had spent all she had. Mark 5, verse 26. And was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. How many has ever prayed and things got worse? How many has ever sought the Lord and things got worse? And a lot of us have, and a lot of us, that's where we quit. That's where a lot of us gives up. That's where a lot of us says, well, I don't guess it's the Lord's will. They need to read in Matthew where Jesus said, when you pray, ask. 
And when you ask, seek. And when you seek, knock. And when you knock, don't stop knocking until God answers the door. Lord have mercy. Somebody say amen. amen. Yesterday I was notified to pray for a four to six month old little baby. It started having breathing problems. And they done an MRI and found out that there was a hole in its lungs and they talked about the disease it was called. Let me tell you what I done. I fell on my knees. When you call me and ask me to pray for you, when you send me a message to pray for you, I don't play. I'm not playing here, folks. I got to stand before God. I got down on my hands and knees and I begged God to touch that baby and heal that baby. I said, God, please don't let Satan win this battle. Last night I went back to the mother. I said, I prayed, I'm praying, and we'll continue to pray until I hear a good report. Somebody say amen. That's what faith is. That's what true faith is. It's praying and believing God until the towel is drawn out of your hand. Now here we are. The famous Jesus... We all can remember back in the 60s and 70s how famous Elvis was. Elvis couldn't even go out of his mansion. People would throng him on the streets. At a concert, they'd have to sneak him in and sneak him out because people would literally tear the clothes off of him. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I promise. I've never been that infatuated with, a, with a, anybody in Hollywood or rock and roll. I know some of you's got some problems, but I, I've never been that impressed. But to show you and teach you from an example that you might be able to gather in your mind, Jesus was moving toward Jairus' house. And Jesus knew who he was. He knew he was going to heal Jairus' daughter. But this little woman was a nobody. She was a sick little Jewish woman that nobody knew anything about. She was standing at the back of the crowd. He was so compassed about that he could barely move, barely take a step because the crowds were gathering in on the narrow streets of that town. And all she could see, maybe she climbed up on a wall and said, he's right over there. And she said, if I just get to him, she thought, I can't, I'm too weak to climb over them. I, I'm too weak. I'm too weak to press my way through the crowd. Are y'all ready for this? Here's what I really believe happened. She got down on her knees and thought, I can crawl. I can crawl on my hands and knees. And if I can just touch the tassels, those little tassels that's sewed around his cloak, if I can just touch one of those tassels, I know I'll be made whole. She started crawling. Mm. Somebody say Glory. Maybe that's why she got healed and a million others that day didn't. Pride. Unbelief. She crawled, folks. Listen to You can read in the three accounts of, of this gospel. She crawled on her hands and knees through the crowd. Don't you know that that crowd is a lot like crowds today? Don't you know somebody said, what are you doing, woman? Get back. And maybe she faintly said, if I can just touch Jesus, he'll heal me. Maybe some religious nut said, you idiot, you lunatic. Get out of here. But she kept on crawling. And she timed, she timed her, 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 her crawling and her pos position toward Christ that as he took a step to go by. 
<laughs> she reached out. It's a miracle, listen to me. It is a miracle that she even got to him. Listen to me, listen to me. It was a miracle that she even got to him. But that's what faith will do. I said, that's what faith will do. I said, that's what faith does. I said, that's how faith works. If you'll start believing God, will make a way even where there seems not to be a way for you. And God will heal you of your sickness. She never would give up. And as her fingers touched his tassels, She was instantly healed. And Jesus stopped and said, Oh, somebody's touched me. Are y'all ready for this? I said, Jesus stopped. Can you imagine Elvis stopping in a throng, in a crowd, in a mob? He wasn't, I've seen him a few times on TV, he was diving toward the limo. Jesus stopped and told his disciples, and they were trying to keep people away. I like this. Boy, she even got through them. He said, somebody's touched me. And Peter and those guys said, well, Lord, there's thousands here reaching out to touch you. Jesus said, no. No, I'm not talking about that kind of touch. He said, somebody has touched me in faith because I have felt the virtue. The virtue here means the power of God had left his body and gone into a mortal being that was sick. I said, when Jesus said, this virtue, no, I feel virtue has gone out of me. He's saying, no, somebody... A somebody in this vast crowd that believes in me. And the woman, knowing that she had been exposed, she raised her hand up. I can see. <laughs> I want y'all to get a picture of this because you probably never heard it like this. The whole crowd stops. Jesus said, whoa. Everything goes solid. You can hear a pen drop. Jesus says in Hebrew, somebody's touched me. The disciples said, what do you mean somebody's touching you? There's thousands around you. He said, no. The power of God has left me and went into somebody. Watch this. Everybody stopped. Everybody's froze. Out, <laughs> out from <laughs> under the legs of everybody with a smile on her face. For the first time in 12 years, she said, I'm the one. It was me, Lord. I'm the one you healed. That's when Jesus said, daughter, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Will you stand with me today? Give God a hand clap. Daughter, your faith, daughter, your trust in me has made you every widow.